Sabbath greetings. So here I am. After a week of prayer, antecedent prayers. Overcoming prayer. Heartfelt prayer, desperate prayer. I come to the place that God showed me to come to. I come to the place that God spoke to me before. I come to a city of transgression and iniquity. And I'm a person of transgression and iniquity. I've not come to leap off it, but you can't, it's just a hill. There's no steep edges or sharp cliff bits. I'm at the peak and at the top. But I know when I've studied before that I don't even come up to the foot sole of Jesus. I don't even come up to his bootstraps. I stood on top of a mountain, a mighty man of God. And my heart burns, my heart aches. <laughs> I've spoken the prophecy of Jonah over this city. That God is, I've talked about it with people, that God is looking for a place to make an example of. And I've been in Saudi Arabia and I've been in India. I've been in the UK, all around Europe, I've been in America. I've fellowshiped and shared with people from all over the world, all walks of life. And though there are many giving this country a run, New Zealand, your heart is set on destruction. God needs an example, he has to set an example. He's withdrawing and withholding, with, with, withholding his hand, the hand that holds back the cup of wrath that we are all due. To drink from. Jesus paid the price so we didn't have to drink it the first time. He took it upon himself. But it transferred the time, it transferred the 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 onus, the the day to the day of judgment. And in the run-up to that day of judgment, God has to set an example. God has to, to take a people who are hard-hearted, belligerent, rude, low-born. He has to take their greatest jewel, their greatest treasure, their greatest city. And he has to ruin it as he ruined Sodom and Gomorrah. He has to turn all eyes to him again. Why does my heart ache? Shouldn't I be glad that the Lord of hosts is going to put forth his hand? Shouldn't I be glad that he's going to reach out and begin the, the final stages, the, the last act, if you like, of the greatest story ever told? And in the heart felt prayer of a sister in Christ, who at this moment is interceding in prayer just over there where the camera's pointed in Atara in the saddest or one of the saddest and sorriest areas of this city of this great city of this city of the million dollar house of the, the people who are obsessed with the price of houses this city of, of building houses upon edges, upon precipices to get the best view and the best status. This city of pride and arrogance. This city of destruction. And yet she weeps. And yet the voices tremble in prayer to save them, save them Lord. Hold back your wrath. God of Israel, God of Isaac. And yet in a, in a move that so typifies this, this city of 
so many denominations of so many different expressions when it came to the cup when it came to the time when it came to the remembrance the solemn communion that Jesus had given to his disciples that same voice stayed the hand that lifted a cup of wine in favour of a cup of Ribena O Lord of hosts, O God of ages, Rock of ages, King of kings and Lord of lords, where do people honour you? Where do people walk rightly for you? Not me. A languishing sin. I, 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 I can't help but be overwrought and overwhelmed by the thought of sex, sex, sex. Free and open and easy. How many children would I have had without you, Lord, staying in the hands of others, making decisions change? What work would I be in now if it wasn't for you, Lord, changing the hearts and minds, your Holy Spirit whispering into ears, causing them to question, causing them to doubt? I'm the one that pretends to be righteous. I'm the one who stood on the hill over the city, preaching the words of Jonah, or having the, the decision whether I should preach that or, or whether I should stay and say, no, Lord, save this city, save these people. But you showed me visions of the waves crashing over this place, this lowland, of that tower, the sky tower, toppling. Impress upon me the, the volcanoes bursting into life, the land rising and falling, this nation being crushed, crushed, so the million dollar houses mean nothing, so their cars and their vacuum cleaners and whatever else they put their faith in, their books, following the, the faces of the day, the people who looked out, the Elon Musks and the Steve Jobs and the former Australian president a nation that, uh, and city that, that chases every whim of popular culture of liberal society that puts a, a, an unmarried mother as their first minister that maintains a, a relationship with a, with a monarchy bears no interest in what's being done for them. goodness or surrender, faith, hope and suffering, my church family, the people I care about are praying at this time. Though I upheld to come here to pray with them for this city, their city, my city now. Let me go my own way. They didn't have the release. Something I've heard about recently. I don't know what I get wrong. I hear and see a, a sister in trouble on the other side of the world and I have one contact who's close. Within 15 miles, somebody who, who walks in a profession of great faith great certainty, great release by Jesus from a life of drink and drugs and the person in trouble 
prefer, one's professed the same and then has slipped and got caught up and tangled and confused and deceived and is in desperate need of help. So I call out to that person and I say, hey, we have a sister in need. Two weeks later, without a single response, the same person is online saying about how, how, Je how Jesus speaks to her in a, in a Bobby Babes sort of way. And I can't help but put on and say, uh, put on, this, on, on the comment feed. Did you get that message about somebody who needs help? She replies, and in a reply, personal message, I'll personal message you, not public. The message is that she's too busy, that she doesn't feel the release. God didn't give her the release to help. You don't need release from Jesus to go and help the lost, the sick, the poor, the blind, the suffering. It's a given. King of heaven. So a reminder of the fact, I point out those two points. Clearly, they're in her message, not mine. A reminder of the scripture, of Matthew 25. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was homeless, you gave me a place to rest. The next message was an elegant magnus opus that basically just justified the fact that she didn't reply. How could she trust me? How could she trust herself? How could she trust God? In these, in these sort of circumstances, in her experience, she'd have to do this, this, this and that before she actually stretched out to help anybody. But hey, that person's uh, okay to come to them if they need it. What a day and age. What a time. And God just asks us for sin and re to repent of our sins. Be done with them. And I'm not done with mine. I keep stumbling and tripping. I drive too fast. I think the wrong thoughts. If I'm a, the worst and the least, then what are these? Are they the blessed? This city of light, this million dollar houses, sea views and waterfronts and... <clears throat> good fishing I don't know Lord I come here to pray I come here to, to seek and find to look for answers pray for the truth to ask your help for your guidance for your comfort for your blessing and yet by my own word and my own mouth I'm not deserving of anything the least of it Who are you that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me? That you love me? It's amazing. Why then am I preaching alone? Why then am I teaching alone? Why, why am I in the bathrooms and the toilets and the cars? Speaking words of great wisdom, speaking words of blessing and love and fellowship. Words that would lift hearts and minds. How can I not break through this barrier? That this cloud, this mantle that's covered me for how long? All my life. A computer programmer at 11.
postgraduate degree, uh, PhD level binary mathematics. writer of, of, of teletext page editors by the time I was 15. Kitchen mate. Still viable 20 plus years later. City in the Manukau. <laughs> The New Zealand design aesthetic, such great ideas, such blessings, such such amazing grace, such beauty. And yet, Lord, I'm still surrounded by cloud. I'm still a clanging gong, clashing cymbal. I, I speak one thing and people do the other. There's times when they say, yeah, all right, and they still do the other. hopes and dreams for blessing for building for turning and changing a billion Muslims a billion Hindus a billion Chinese you can do it Lord it's not me you've showed it to me you've shown me the possibilities the endless possibilities the the, the awesomeness of your vision your glory your kingdom your your world and yet i still feel like the teacher off peanuts and charlie brown people smile and nod and then go and do the opposite thing it's my own wife <coughs> my only wife carry this cross and this Bible I see the splendor of, of, of your love unfolding that the, that the camera won't show it was was a an eight octa cloud filled sky as just as I've been speaking here just like a like a flowing river opened up dismissed the cloud the stars shine through Same hill that uh, in an eight octa on a on a on a on a, uh, on a daytime. That a cross, a gap in the shape of a cross of sunlight appeared over the harbour and approached this hill. I see your miracles. As I walk out of a out across a scrubby desert in India after walking out of a job and at the point where my you know my doubt. And fear starts to overwhelm me. That my inward turning eye is, is caught by an outward event. A single pink blossom flowing over my shoulder. And as I look away as it, as it spirals in front of me and reminds me of the chapter from Luke about us being flowers. I see that I'm ankle deep, ankle deep in blossom. And I look before me and behind me on the road. I'm in a 20 foot, a, a five metre pool of Bergenvillea blossom. The only blossom in a whole desert. I know you're real. I know you're true. I know you're, you're alive. Driving through Manchester, I see you robed in glory and majesty. Piled of cloud up and rainbows and lightning, thunder, parting to the light. Another time on this hill at night, and you appear on a throne, crowned by the moon, the full moon. You are Jehovah Jireh, you are God Almighty, El Shaddai, Adonai. Eloi, Eloi. 
Lama Shabak Thani. You come so close. Or is it me? Oh, it has to be me. I come so close and then fall away. I'm as Israel. Repenting of my sins, taking up the mantle, picking up my cross, giving glory to your name. And then uh, some piece of tail walks past. Lord, if I could throw myself off this hill, I would. I love you. I don't know what to do for you. Pray for this city. Pray for your goodness. Or pray for your fire. Pray for your love. Pray for your love. For this world. For this nation. I don't even know why I turn the camera on. If I turn it off, I'll just be praying. 